freuen uns, Ihnen zwei ganz besondere Gäste aus Kanada präsentieren zu dürfen. Percy und Louise Schmeiser, das Pharma-Ehepaar aus Kanada. Simultan. Wer mag, kann Englisch zuhören. Wer Deutsch lieber mag, kann Deutsch zuhören. Und ähm, wer mag, kann auch beides dann hören. Übersetzt wird es zu meiner Linken von Bernhard Geier, ein Freund der beiden, die kennen Sie schon sehr lange. Dann wird eine kleine Podiumsdiskussion folgen. Daran werden auch Bert Voss teilnehmen und Rolf Stoltenberg, der kommt nachher, so. der kommt nachher auch aufs Podium. Ja, damit übergebe ich an Bernhard Geier. Ja, einen guten Abend. Äh ich habe gehört, hier im Norden kann man Moin Moin zu jeder Tageszeit sagen. Äh, Sie gehört gleich an meinem kleinen Graf, Klang, dass ich aus der Pfälzer Ecke komme, aber ich werde heute Abend nicht ins Pfälzische übersetzen. Ich denke, ich nicht wenige hier. Äh, wie ich schon gesagt ich bin ein Freund von Personal Leads schon seit vielen Jahren und zwar war ich 18 Jahre Direktor von IVAM. Das kennt sicher einige, zumindest die Bios hier, den Weltdachverband Biologisch Landbau. Und aus diesem Zusammenhang habe ich dort ganz früh mitgekriegt, was da gerade in Kanada, Kanada passiert mit den Schmeißes. Und äh, das erste Mal, wo ich den Preis übersetzt habe, war am Anfang seines seine, seine langen Leidenswegs mit Monsanto. Da waren wir in Luxemburg in einem Kuhstall, hatten eine Veranstaltung. Da waren mehr Kühe wie Menschen drin. Und also heute Abend haben wir zwar gar keine Kühe, aber Sie sehen, da hat sich einiges getan. <lacht> David gegen Monsanto. Das ist ein schöner Titel, weil es unheimlich gute Geschichte beschreibt, die wir gleich hören wollen. Aber das ist nicht ganz korrekt. Wir konnten nur nicht die Bibel ändern, aber in der Realität gab es nicht nur einen David, sondern es gab auch eine Davidine. Und in all den Nobelpreisen haben wir gesehen, in dem Ausstieg aus dem Kirchlichen Parlament hat nicht nur der Börse gekriegt, sondern auch seine Gattin, die Luise. Und ich denke, so zieht zuerst einmal herzlich willkommen, heißt, weil sie nachher nicht auf die Bühne kommt. Luise, ich bin sehr jung. I should give you a little bit more background. Besides being a farmer, I also was a member of parliament in the provincial government. And then my role in government, uh, that I was in agriculture. And in agriculture, I worked for rules, laws, regulations that I thought always would benefit farmers. But I really have to give a lot of thanks to my wife, because while I was in government, when I was in agriculture, she was raising five children and doing most of the research in rough seeds. So I really have to give my wife a lot of thanks. Now, I'm here this evening to talk to you and bring you an awareness what happens if you ever introduce GMOs, genetic modified organisms. Now, there are a lot of issues that arise if you ever introduce GMOs. You have the health issue. 
You have the farmer's liability issue. You have the, the control of your seeds being taken away. Environmental issues, law issues, and so on. So there's more to it than just seeds or plants. We now, GMOs were introduced into Canada and the United States at exactly the same time in 1996. So we now have 14 full crop years of GMOs and now we know what happens if you ever introduce GMOs. And there were four crops introduced in 1996 and that was Ropsey, Soya, Maize and Cotton. Now before I go more into the issue of GMOs, I think I should tell you what has happened to my wife and myself in 1998, two years after the introduction, with a lawsuit from Monsanto against us. They, they laid what they called a patent infringement lawsuit where they said my wife and I were growing Monsanto's GMO rough seed without a license from them. That was a great surprise to us because we had never nothing to do with Monsanto. We had never bought their seed and we were really concerned that all the work that we had done in developing new rough seed was now contaminated with a GMO. And we said to Monsanto, you have contaminated us, you should be guilty and you should pay for the damages for the contamination. So it went to Federal Court of Canada with one judge and after three years of legal battle, this is what the judge ruled. Before the trial, Monsanto admitted that we had never purchased or bought their seed, but they said because they have a patent on a gene and they contaminated us, we no longer own our seeds or plants. Under patent law, it becomes their ownership. Now I'll give you, I'll give you just some of the rulings of the judge. First of all, he ruled it does not matter how a farmer is contaminated. Whether you're an organic farmer, if you're a conventional farmer, if you are contaminated, you no longer own your seeds or plants under pot law. They become the ownership of a corporation, in this case, Monsanto. So after that ruling, my wife and I decided we were going to fight and fight as hard as we could. And the case, eventually, after seven years, of legal battle, it went to the Supreme Court of Canada. And some of the other items that we brought in were these. First of all, can living organisms, seeds, plants, genes, human organs be owned and protected by corporate patents on intellectual property? Another important one, can farmers' right to grow conventional or organic crops be protected? And another one, can farmers keep the ancient right to save their own seeds, use their own seeds, and develop them further if they so desire from year to year? And the last one, which my wife and I thought or felt was so important, who owns life? Does any corporation, any individual have the right to patent, put patents on life where they control the future of life? And we said that should never happen. Life is sacred. 